All right, so why don't we, uh, I see people are coming into the room, but for uh, time's sake, let's get started here. Um, my name's Jeff Jeffries. I'm with the Career and Professional Development Center at Carnegie Mellon University. And I'm excited today for our webinar. We have, uh, we're featuring um, from our Dietrich College Statistics and Data Science. And we have a, a great team here to talk about all the programs there and, and what's happening and uh, we're delighted to have many employers to join us today to learn more about the program. So uh, with that being said, a um, couple housekeeping. We have, um, if you could, if you have questions for the panel, please put your questions in the chat and we'll, we'll try to get to those. Um, we're gonna have about 20 minutes of content in the last 10 minutes, we will have some Q&A, but feel free to put your questions in there as they come up. Um, with that being said, I'm going to turn it over to Rebecca Nugent from our statistics and data science program. Rebecca, it's all yours. All right, good, hello everybody. Good afternoon, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Jeff, for that wonderful introduction. Let me echo his welcome to all of the attendees who are joining us. Please feel free to put your company and location if you'd like in the chat. Um, and thank you for spending some time with us at Carnegie Mellon Statistics and Data Science. Uh, before I kick off with some slides, I'd like to um, first introduce a few people who are on the gallery screen with me. So my name is Rebecca Nugent. I'm the Associate Head in Statistics and Data Science at Carnegie Mellon. I'm the co-director of the undergraduate program. And I, I'm also the director of something we call our Corporate Capstone Program, which is a data science experiential learning program that partners um, external entities that could be for-profits, non-profits, social services, government organizations, et cetera, with uh, teams of students and faculty to work on real problems that are happening in data science um, in, their, in their companies. And then um, I also work on developing executive education data science, statistics and data science programs for external partners as well. And my um, partner in that, I will turn to Jamie McGovern to intro. Good morning, good afternoon all. My name is Jamie McGovern. I'm the director of the Master of Statistical Practice program at Carnegie Mellon. I joined Carnegie Mellon earlier this year. You'll hear more about our program shortly. Working with the MSP program on capstones, working in executive education, and excited to be a part of this department. Okay. And then we also have um, two, one person joining us from Dietrich College, the home college of uh, statistics and data science. Uh, Adam Cosgrove, would you like to say a quick hello? Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, my name is Adam Cosgrove. I'm the Associate Director of Corporate Relations for the Dietrich College, uh, of which statistics and data science is one of our uh, many departments. And my role is to help uh, you, our external partners, navigate uh, all the internal processes and make sure all the connections happen that, uh, that, that can. So thanks so much for joining us. All right, then, and I will note, we do have one more person who's uh, not coming off a of video, but her name is Samantha Nielsen, and she is also one of the directors of the undergraduate program in statistics and data science, and she'll be available to answer some questions and, and take some notes. But let's, uh, let's, let's kick things off um, with kind of an overview of who we are. So hopefully you are looking at a opening slide here that says statistics and data science CMU talent insider webinar. And what we want to do is this deck has quite a bit of information in it that we're going to share the deck with um, the distribution list of attendees afterward. So the goal is not to go through the deck in detail right now, but to give a high level overview of some of our programs and some of the opportunities that you have to engage with our department and then open it up for questions where we could do a deeper dive in particular areas if you'd like. So let's just uh, kick things off. So Carnegie Mellon University, uh, we're a private university, R1 research designation. Um, we have unusually about the same percentage of undergrads as we do grads, about 7,000 of each. And there are, we are comprised of seven colleges and statistics and data science is inside the Dietrich College of Humanities and Social Sciences. And I wanted to highlight that because that's not often what people think of when they think of data science and statistics. They think of it as belonging in maybe an engineering school or in computer science or something that they associate more with analytics or computers, etc. Statistics and data science has always been in the Dietrich College of Humanities and Social Sciences. Um, it went from a 
single department into this college because we really think about solving problems holistically, thinking about the impact on society, thinking about the social sciences, how can we incorporate um, people's behavior, et cetera, into um, our data science solutions. And at Carnegie Mellon, doesn't really matter anyway because everybody works with everybody. So we have collaborations set up with all of the other colleges. Um, it's an extremely interdisciplinary, well-connected collaborative space. In statistics and data science, we have PhD programs in statistics, statistics and machine learning, which is joint with the machine learning department in the School of Computer Science. You can study statistics and public policy, a joint program with our Heinz College, neuroscience. You can do things with educational research, engineering and public policy. And we have about 65 students in the PhD program at any given time. We, those students do receive a master's in statistics their first year. But we also have a one year terminal master's program that is not part of the PhD program. This MSP program is focused on industry preparation. So we think of this program as a pipeline directly to um, directly to careers in nonprofits, for profits, etc. Um, it is very much focused on applied statistical methodology, data science, strong, strong component in industry preparation. There's a client facing practical component, collaboration, communication. Uh, these students are being sent out ready to go. And that has about 35 to 40 students a year. We're also affiliated with a master's in computational finance program. That is a one and a half year master's that is joint across a few different departments at Carnegie Mellon. It is of course targeted for specifically computational finance. And we have a small campus in New York City on Broad Street and that works also with our Pittsburgh campus for about 100 students a year in that cohort. Our undergraduate programs are our, by far our largest. Um, we have so 7,000 of those undergraduates that I mentioned on the other slide, about 600 of those are ours in statistics and data science. Um, we have five different ways you can major um, in a statistics and science, uh, data science department just statistics with any particular concentration that the student is interested in, a joint program in economics and statistics, that's joint with the Tepper School of Business and the economics department, a joint program in statistics and machine learning, which is joint with the machine learning department in the School of Computer Science. And then we have two tracks, one in mathematical statistics and one in statistics and neuroscience. So one of the things that I'm asked quite often about, and I'm happy to take more questions at the end about, are those statistics and machine learning degrees, because they're really unusual. And Carnegie Mellon, due to its uh, decentralized structure, has lots of really fascinating um, combination degrees, joint degrees, interdisciplinary degrees that you don't find other places. So for statistics and machine learning, we have both a PhD program and an undergraduate program that, that build that bridge between the two disciplines. At the PhD level, uh, they do core courses in statistical theory, computing methodology, and then also in machine learning, both theory and methods, deep learning, AI, et cetera. Um, their dissertation research and their advanced data analysis projects are also supported by both departments. Faculty are, um, we have several faculty that are joint in both places or affiliated. Um, that we really work with the machine learning department all the time. So what, but what is um, a little bit unusual that I want to, I want to clarify, um, the machine learning department at Carnegie Mellon does not have an undergraduate program. There are a few undergraduate courses, but you will not find students who are graduating with a machine learning degree at the undergraduate level at Carnegie Mellon. The undergraduate degree is statistics and machine learning, and it is technically housed in our Department of Statistics and Data Science, even though it is a joint program between the two departments. So if you are interested in working with students who have extensive experience in machine learning, um, algorithms, AI, uh, we do have an artificial intelligence degree that's being rolled out right now at Carnegie Mellon. But if you're thinking really about that intersection of data science and machine learning, then coming to the Dietrich College would be where you would try to start building your recruiting pipeline because technically it's housed at the undergraduate level in, in our college. And I do want to point out that in that program, the students are doing graduate level machine learning work around their junior, senior year. So these are really quite, quite, quite good students 
Um, there is a strong focus on real world problems. They do experiential learning capstones, et cetera. Um, so it's kind of a hallmark of our program. So let's kind of take a step back really quickly and think about undergraduate statistics and data science. Just broadly, students who graduate from our program will, will have the foundational theory. There's a reason statistics is in this department name. We believe strongly in building solutions that are robust, stable, interpretable, that we're not getting rid of the statistics when we think about data science. And we also could focus on statistical thinking. But we are pulling in quite a bit of this advanced statistical methodology, the data science, the visualization skills that you that you do want from recent graduates. And we have a big focus on communication and collaboration. Uh, we are always trying to get these students to prepare for industry um, opportunities and learning how to communicate with people from diverse backgrounds, learning how to collaborate on complex problems. Um, and we, to that effect, we, are all, uh, we start freshman year first week of freshman year they are working on real world problems we don't actually use a lot of textbooks we bring the real problems right into the classroom so our students um can they do a pretty good the ones who graduate with bachelor's degrees um, from carnegie mellon in statistics and data science it's a pretty good mix of people who move on into graduate school uh, most of them are heading into the workforce it's a very um it's just there's they're sought after students in, in some way in a lot of ways and and they end up in a lot of diverse careers and, and i'm happy to talk a little bit more about that but um and then we do have uh, about 20 percent of our students right now are heading into master's programs and phd programs they will often also go work for a few years and then come back for that advanced degree so that master's in statistical practice program that one year this again is a um, broad foundation into the core ideas and skills that underlie modern statistics and data science, but with an eye toward that industry preparation. So while they are learning advanced statistical modeling and computing frameworks, and they're incorporating statistical thinking throughout, they are doing that while being aligned with learning industry valued competencies, learning how to think about how to scope projects, how to collaborate and work with others, stick with a timeline, learn to consult, um, identify the problem, try to develop a, a statistical solution, but within the real world context or the business context. That is a heavy, heavy focus of, of our MSP program. And at the end, if you'd like to hear more about that, um, Jamie McGovern can, can answer those questions. Just at high level, the students, it's a very intense one year program. They're, they're coming out with a lot of knowledge. Um, they are, it's jam packed, but I want to highlight very quickly. If you look at the spring 21 schedule on the far right, you'll see a course called 36-726, the statistical practice course. And that is a client facing collaboration with an external partner where students are spending extensive time during that spring semester, working on solving a real world problem with an external partner. And we'd like to kind of make sure that we're advertising that opportunity to everyone here on the webinar. We're always interested in bringing in new partners into that course and into that program. So do please reach out if you're interested in learning more there. All right, as, as by design, the MSP students go where you'd expect. Most of them go to industry. And we do have a few that head um, for PhD programs, but the vast majority of them are getting a job in the field of statistics and data science within 90 days of graduation. In the PhD program, this is a, we are a very, very research focused um, department and with respect to the PhD program, um, we do theory and methodology, high dimensional statistics, machine learning, causal inference, network analysis, etc. cetera. Um, there's a large statistical computing component to our PhD training. We very much believe in interdisciplinary research. PhD students who leave our program are not um, are all going to have experience working with real data and again working with external partners that's also part of our PhD program. So the um, from a graduation standpoint standpoint some of our students go into research positions some into faculty, but many of them go into industry um, at PhD level positions. And that's, I'm sorry, just repeating what I just said. Um, most of our PhD students receive uh, jobs very quickly on the market. They go into postdoctoral quantitative research, data science, consulting, software engineering, academia. Um, 
and some of some of the some of where they tend to land of course in this year the year of the pandemic it's a little bit up in the air but we have very we have very uh, strong placement and strong students um, every every year okay so at a very high level um, there are other ways to connect with our programs besides just uh, setting up recruiting pipelines or coming to learn more about our students if you're interested in hiring them we have practicum and capstones in all of the programs undergraduate and masters and phd you can work with faculty to create and scope a project that's tailored to your needs and we hand select students from our pools to based on their skill sets and interests to best match your projects so we're happy to talk about that we also do customized uh, data science and statistics executive education this can range from something like let's just learn how to talk about data for the executive suite or the c level um, we do things for business leaders how to learn how to work with data science teams in your industry um, how to how to manage your data science teams how to extract value from data um, all the way down to actually some more of the technical data science skills so there's a wide range of things that we can do in executive education and you're also welcome we have partners all the time talk to our students, set up meet and greets. Um, if we were in person, they buy a lot of pizza and do a lot of presentations and slideshows. But um, you're more than welcome to come and visit our programs um, anytime that you would like. So the types of projects that we get, I think I'll skip this, but I, I'll, these are the types of, we do an incredibly wide range of projects if you're interested in learning more um, from data integration, visualization, analytics, data mining, we work with text data, we work with survey data, you name it, these students work with it. So if you're thinking about a project that might make sense for your uh, for your company, we, we've probably worked in that area before. So do feel free to reach out. Um, I'd mentioned executive education, happy to answer more questions there. And then I also wanted to highlight at the end before we open it up for the Q&A, is that we have quite a bit of data science related outreach that happens as well. So these are opportunities for engagement, sponsorship, presentations, or just general support. You can interface with students and faculty through this. Um, some, so these are just a few examples that we're happy to answer question, excuse me, answer questions about. The first is something called Women in Data Science Pittsburgh at Carnegie Mellon, just shorthand WIDS. This is a global initiative that Carnegie Mellon runs the Pittsburgh region event. And um, this is supporting and highlighting work that are done by self-identified females in data science, but anybody can attend, absolutely anybody. And we have usually have sponsors and partners come in to do recruiting events or to sponsor the events. They bring in speakers. Um, they sort of, they do like resume books with the students, et cetera. So there are opportunities to engage with that. We also have other diversity initiatives that we can connect you with as well. Um, one of them actually being through our sports analytics work. So the, the reason that I mentioned sports analytics on this webinar is this is a, um, an initiative that we do that is has a strong outreach and diversity component with the idea that we can connect more people to STEM fields, data science and statistics through data by using sports. And so um, we, we often have uh, great success at getting people excited about data science and statistics by generating curriculum events projects workshops fun stuff that has to do with sports and data so that that's a big piece of outreach that um, we're always looking for partners as well um, and in general we believe strongly that data belong to everybody so we're always thinking about how to promote data literacy across the board so not just for people who are going to be experts in data science but for everybody absolutely everybody even those of you who are on this webinar so we're happy to talk more about our efforts in that area if you would like to learn more about the undergraduate program and again this deck will be made available and sent out um, rebecca nugent peter freeman are the two names to look for if you would like to learn more about the master's in statistical practice program, the two names to look for on the website and the deck are Jamie McGovern and Terea White. If you would like to learn more about the PhD program, the two names are Valerie Ventura and Ann Lee. Oh, excuse me, went the wrong way, apologize. If you'd like to learn more about executive education opportunities, uh, you can reach out to me, Rebecca Nugent or Jamie McGovern. And I, and I'll say, I'll stop sharing right now, but I will say that um, 
If you have any questions at all, actually, about any of this, though, you're you're more than welcome to reach out to me. I'm going to put my email into the chat. But I'll stop right there so that we can make sure that we have time. I saw lots of questions coming in and some raised hands. So I'll turn it over to um, Jeff and Sean to help us uh, kick off some of these questions. Yeah, I, I think um, one of the questions you mentioned, the uh, external partners, the, the class 36-726. Mm -hmm. um, could you dig into that a little deeper and unpack that so that we have a better understanding of that? Like, what does this entail? Like, if I'm a external partner and I'm a XYZ company, like, what are my responsibilities for being that partner? And then what is the commitment? And are, is there any cost to that as well? Yeah, sure. So I'll do a high level about just the department in general and then turn the specifics for that class over to Jamie McGovern because that's a master's uh, program class. But in general, um, you can partner for all three programs, undergraduate, masters, and PhD. All three programs have classes that are 15 weeks long that you, um, that you can work with faculty members in our department to scope a project for those 15 weeks. You turn a team of students and some faculty loose on that, but we often do it in partnership with statisticians or data scientists or people who are at the company. So there are regular meetings. Um, so think of it as kind of a part we're working together. Um, the meetings can range from once a week, if that's what the partner wants, to once a month. So it's very much dependent on the partner. Um, and, and the undergraduate program, we run that every fall, spring, and we can also do summer. The PhD program um, is a little bit longer of a project. It's more like a year long project. But the master's program is um, where we have quite a bit of success with those types of um, practicum projects. So I'll turn that over to Jamie to answer some more specifics about that 36726. Sure. So, so I'm going to start by just quickly recapping the MSP. Think of it as three main areas of focus, data analysis, statistical computing, and professional skills. The practicum in the spring is the synthesis of everything that they've learned to date an opportunity to do client facing work, realistic problems, because the problems are real, because the clients are real, the data is real. So think of it like an engagement where you are the client for services that the team is performing. So what does that entail in terms of accountability and what do we need to do for participation? Um, it, we start with an upfront review. So the entire class, it'll be a subset between three to five students assigned to each capstone. But all of the capstones are presented to the class. So the class has an idea of what everybody's working on across projects. It'll break out into teams. <clears throat> They'll have weekly status reports for the clients, depending on the variety of the, the services that we can provide. All projects can be very different. And it's going to be individually solution to what the needs are. But over that 15 weeks, we're going to be working to add value and engage with you as our stakeholders. So those will be regular meetings. Those will be producing work products. Those will be presentations. Um, and the commitment, synchronous commitment, can be limited just like it would with any client-facing work, depending on your availability. We just want to have the opportunity to do that presentation, that client interaction, to get that feedback to submit work products and, and get feedback. And some of that can be asynchronous as well. And it ends at the end of the 15 weeks with final presentations. So everyone will come back at the end and get to see all the work that the teams have performed. Um, those are four fee projects for not for for-profit corporations. It's 15,000 for a first project with the, the department. Um, those are no fee projects for nonprofit organizations. Let me pause there. I know someone asked a question about the MSP program and if it's distance learning. Um, so, so I can handle that as well. It, it's, it's not a distance program. It's a rigorous program. Uh, it's typically in person. Of course, this year is a non-standard year. Some of that education has been performed remotely uh, at a distance, but it is an in-person program with in, it's an in-person program that's had even in-person components during the pandemic. Um, so some of the cl classes have been delivered remotely this year only, uh, but this isn't a, a distance education program. The students are typically in class on campus working together here in Pittsburgh. 
Got it. What about the executive education? Is that something that needs to be done in person or can people do that um, online? Yeah, yeah. So, so the executive education, um, we actually can, we, we would love to see you in person. We'd love to have you come on campus and spend some time with you. But no, we're able to do that virtually as well. So even prior to the pandemic, we were doing um, hybrid executive education solutions where people were coming maybe together for say a kickoff for a couple of days or something on campus. And then we were moving into say weekly meetings where they were being supported virtually. And then if they wanted to coming back. So we, we already have our system set up to be in person or virtual. And um, most of the programs right now, of course, that we're running are we're doing them completely virtually. But um, we're, we're able to customize those solutions as, as whatever's the best fit for the uh, for the partner. Particularly given that um, so many partners aren't just based in Pittsburgh, for example, right? They're based all over the world. So even if we have people locally who want to attend, um, we're able to get people from other offices and other time zones. So so we're, we're we're used to that as well. Jamie, did you want to add anything to that? I'm just trying to follow on the the, the questions here. Mm -hmm. I, I think there was something in the chat. Uh, Priya asked something about you know knowing that it's several months away. Uh, recruiting in the fall and the pandemic and what what it might look like. I know from our perspective and, and planning for career fairs, um, you know, we're still un, uncertain as to whether or not our events will be in person like they have been prior, uh, pre-pandemic. Um, the hope is that we will have in-person events. Um, but for now, for the spring, we will continue to be um, doing everything virtually. And, um, you know, you, if you guys have any questions regarding events that we're doing, feel free to reach out and we're happy to point you in the right direction as to what those events might look like for fall. Um, but I didn't know if, if there might be something that, are there any events happening within the program that, uh, Rebecca or Jamie, right, that you sure. might have to, um, connect with students if there's an employer that um, you know wants to connect. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. So so we work with the CPDC to to help support those fall events that Jeff just referenced. But then they, we also um, help support a department level targeted uh, recruiting opportunities that people maybe want to get in front of just statistics and data science students. So it is very common for people to directly reach out to our department and ask to set up things like a meet and greet, or um, maybe they're coming on campus. A again, this is in the in the back back uh, back together in person world, but maybe they're coming on campus to go to one of the um, employment opportunity conferences or the technical conferences, and they also want to set up an additional event with statistics and data science. So we, we do that kind of stuff all the time. Um, the master's program, and we do that for undergraduate, master's, um, and PhD. So, so we're really, um, we are very accustomed to trying to make, to make something be efficient for our partners. So for example, I would be happy if you are already coming on campus or engaging with us for one opportunity, but you have some time. We'd like to kind of help you spend your day by getting you in front of as many populations as you'd like. So if you're already coming to Carnegie Mellon to participate in the TOC, for example, then why not come over to the department and talk to some students, get in front of a master's in statistical practice class to introduce yourself. So we, we, we try to like make sure we're maximizing your time so that you can get, again, in front of as many students as possible. Yeah, I, I think with the, the MSP program in, in the fall, we've had organizations specifically interested in students who wanted the opportunity to reach them directly. We had some industry panels in the classroom setting where people joined virtually and talked about the experience at this organization, the experience from a career development standpoint, where did data scientists go post-graduation? What can a career look like in different types of industries? We'll have those in the MSP program throughout the spring as well. If you're interested in attending one of those in, uh, virtual panels for one of the classes at the MSP, you can reach out and, and I can help facilitate that as well. Hey, uh, Alicia had a question about uh, partnerships available for the PhD program. Sure, yeah, thanks Alicia. So the, the partnerships that are available just to, um, one of the more 
common ways that people engage with the PhD program is, of course, to sponsor internships over the summer. That's, you know, the students aren't responsible for um, teaching or doing anything over the summer except doing their research or doing an internship. So that's one type of partnership. Um, and another type of partnership is to sponsor a PhD student's research over the summer. So I, I'm putting that next to internship because uh, we think of the internship more as they're they're leaving Carnegie Mellon and they're and they're going to the company and working for them. But we've also had where students are staying at Carnegie Mellon, working on research, being supervised by faculty members. But there's an external partner who's sponsoring that research, and everyone's kind of working together to push that research agenda forward. So that's another way. Another opportunity in the PhD program is that the first year students, halfway through their first year, so January, they start what a year long advanced data analysis project. So that'll go from January to December. And that is um, answering a statistical data science applied methodology research question. So this is not developing new statistical theory, but this is very much an applied interdisciplinary problem with an external partner. Um, and so that is also supervised by a faculty member in statistics and data science, but it is working with somebody externally. And that could be a scientist in another discipline. It could be another academic researcher, or it could be a researcher from an industry partner that has a relationship, et cetera. So those are some of the more common ways that um, outside partners typically engage with our PhD program. Terrific, terrific. Well, it doesn't look like we have any other questions in the chat and we are at time. So oh, we, we do, that... Jeff, I'm sorry, if we can, if we can do, we do have one more that just popped in into the Q&A. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I think um, that's an MSP project. If we could, if we could get Jamie to grab that one quickly. Thanks, I, I, I just saw it. So I, yes, if reading the question, opportunities to join the classroom and do a panel discussion on specific topics. So some of the topics we had in the fall, what the first year in the data science position looks like for a resource what what career paths in industry look like we'll put together the panels based on the participation and the uh the supply i get from partners like you so if you're interested in coming in and talk to the class we can work together to put together a topic and bring in panelists um, we've brought in people uh, early in their career we've brought in people senior in data science positions talked about the difference between data science embedded in a function, data science has its own function within an organization, trends people see in industry, skills in high demand, uh, lessons learned from early in a career. So we, you know, we've put together a variety of topics. Yes, we will continue that through the spring. Uh, please reach out and be happy to set something up. Terrific, terrific. Thanks for catching that question there. Um, yeah, I think, uh, are there any other questions? I'll, I'll do a real quick one, see if we get anybody, but yeah, um, we, we will. Yeah. Yeah, oh, sorry, Jeff, yeah, please. yeah. Uh, go ahead. Oh, I, I was just going to say to the to the question that just got put in about emailing us the details on the program. We're yeah, we're happy to do that. We're, um, and I think Jeff was getting ready to talk about what we're going to share. So I'll, I'll turn it to. Yeah, okay. I was just yeah. going to say we will be uh, um, sharing the list with Rebecca and Jamie of everybody who attended and they will be sending out all the information uh, regarding um, with those slides and then they can answer any questions you might have in terms of engaging with the team and how to do that. So uh, I'm excited about that. Uh, one other thing I wanna tell everybody about next week, we have Encompass, um, which is our large career fair in the spring. And uh, day one is full, but we still have day two open and we always have a lot of data science students there. So if you are searching for data science students um, and you do register, put in your booth the types of uh, students you are looking for and that will draw uh, students to your booth and they will sign up and, and connect with you. But uh, this was a great, great, great panel and very informative. Thank you both to Jamie and Rebecca. Um, if you do have any questions in the meantime, feel free to reach out to us, but you will be receiving something from the team here shortly. And uh, they will talk about ways to engage and uh, we will include the slides as well. Yeah. Any, so anything else on your end? Oh, no, just thank you so much for joining us. Um, we're always we're always looking for new partnerships and we know um, if, if past experience is any indication you are all working on really exciting data problems so we'd, we'd love to hear from you.
Terrific. Thank you, everyone. Yep. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you to our panel and to all the employers that joined us today. Have a wonderful afternoon and we will be in touch soon. Take care. Take care.